Well, good evening. It's the next auction score. Um, I've been after one of these for a while, but they've been sort of ridiculously priced. Uh, and I finally found one that was uh, that was very inexpensive. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to jump on this. And what this is, is a 432 power meter and an accompanying uh, Hewlett Packard uh, 478A Thermistor mount. So this is the, the Thermistor that is read by this meter. Now, uh, these meters are very, very accurate. Uh, uh, when you utilize on the back here uh, these channels, and if you look at this meter, you can see that it's in pretty damn good nick. I gave it a little clean up with some uh, IPA before we videoed, but on the back here, you know, you look at the BNC connectors, they're, uh, they're quite clean. And there's a lot of times you'll see a lot of rust on, oops, a lot of times you'll see a lot of rust on this guy here, which is where you can get the rear kit to uh, come out. And so uh, overall, I think this is actually in, in pretty good uh, condition. I think this is actually was originally owned if you look in here, and we might be able to zoom that in a little bit, I think this was originally owned by the Oregon uh, Highway Department. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, I'm in Washington State, so it's just the state down the road. I'm guessing they used this um, to set uh, values of RF power meters uh, for uh, their radios uh, on the road, uh, on the you know, Department of Transportation. So. Let's uh, let's take a, a, a quick look. I haven't even plugged this in. I haven't even uh, uh, connected it to see what uh, what it does yet. Actually, before we uh, open it up, uh, let's quickly sort of go through the the operating uh, procedure, the operating uh, case for it. What we have here in this uh, thermistor mount uh, is that uh, uh, there are four little thermistors mounted on a, a common uh, substrate. And there are two that are mounted together in between the RF signal and two that are mounted completely separately out from side of the RF chamber. And so what that means is the two outside of the chamber respond to the ambient temperature. The two inside the chamber respond to the ambient temperature plus the temperature that's instituted by the RF signal. And that's effectively what these uh, guys are doing is they're measuring uh, RF signal power by uh, taking that RF signal and dissipating, converting into heat, and when they convert into heat, uh, the thermistor resistor drops, resistance drops, and then the bridge that's used uh, in the meter here can detect that. So let's have a look at how the meter works uh, quickly. Uh, just move that cable out of the road. And so let me zoom in so that uh, you can get a better screen view of this. Basically, what goes on here is that you connect your RF in and that comes into the RF bridge uh, and that was the bit that's inside the thermistor that is between you know, the RF signal. So it uh, reacts to temperature and this is the compensation bridge, it reacts to temperature. Additionally, this also reacts to the RF signal, this doesn't. So VRF represents the voltage that's in the bridge that comes from uh, the combined effect of the signal and the ambient temperature, whereas VCOMP is simply the ambient temperature. So what you can do is take those, add them together, subtract them, and effectively use VCOMP to null out the temperature effects in the, the circuit and then read only what happens from the, the power of the RF uh, uh, signal coming in. So basically, what ends up happening is a 5 kilohertz multiverter creates a VCOMP plus RF and a VCOMP minus RF. On this side of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, circuit, the pulse width is proportional to the two values. On this side of the circuit, the amplitude is proportional to VCOMP minus VRF, and that's how we get rid of, um, uh, we get rid of the, the VCOMP aspect of it. And so, Inside this switch, they're melded back together so that uh, the meter sees a set of pulses that uh, have their width and amplitude directly based on the RF signal here. And then 
we utilize an auto zero circuit to basically keep that compensation bridge uh, added to, to zero. So that's the, the quick uh, uh, chart of how it works. Let's zoom back out and actually crack open the lid on this guy and take a look inside. So I've never actually looked inside one of these units before. So this is going to be uh, a first for me as well. Is that... Uh... Yep, that's just the standard. Uh, a lot of HP gear utilized uh, posi drive uh, screws that you can see via the little cross that they have. Uh, that's just a standard screw uh, in there. So let's take this take this cover off and take a look inside. This is pretty awesome. Uh, this is the standard um, this is the, the classic form uh, follows function. We have a board here and a board here and these boards I'd have to take a look at the um, I have to take a look at the schematic, but I'm assuming that the chopper amplifier. Let me assuming that this is going to be the uh, the chopper amp. Let me see if we can get in there. This is going to be the chopper amplifier in here, um, and then uh, the rest of the the circuitry is uh, is over here because uh, uh, there's a little bit of circuitry in there. But basically, you can see there are very simple uh, device, very simple power supply at the back here coming into these two boards and we'd have to take the sides off to take a, a, a look in. Um, I don't really want to do that, I want to uh, get in and uh, actually turn it on because I'm quite excited to see if it actually works. So what uh, it uses is a special uh, cable here that has uh, six pins in it that uh, connects to the various different bridges. So let me go and plug this cable in. And screw this down. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that lid back on, just because we're uh, I'm going to be turning this up on its uh, tilting this up so that you can see what's uh, going on in it. So we want to make sure that uh, I don't touch any of the uh, hurty parts of the the system. So I need my, uh, where did, there we go, okay, let's plug this in, and then on the front here, we take that same cable and we plug it into the thermistor mount, oh, and we can see uh, the signal bouncing around on the meter already, okay, so let's come up here and let me get uh, get a couple of other classic HP uh, gear this is the 355D and the 355C uh, these are uh, step attenuators they're fantastic pieces of kit and you can pick them up quite uh, inexpensively on uh, on eBay these days so let's uh, just get that in there so it's not sitting on its uh, its back let's get a bit more light in on that okay so let's set it to let's set it to 100% now uh, the the mounts that you can get uh, you can also get waveguide mounts out of this and so they'll have different uh, resistances but these uh, four seven eight A's are a 200 ohm so let's set that and then what I'm going to go do is take a quick look yep and zero looks pretty reasonable let me grab my let me grab a, a screwdriver and we'll just Give zero a little tweak so what you do is you take the how you're supposed to do this is take the um, uh, you take the needle past zero and then you bring it back 
and then once you hit exactly dead on zero then you back the screw mechanism off just a touch and that just unbinds uh, the zero mechanism there so there we go let's um let's turn let's turn this on and see what uh what happens oh i guess it it was on okay so now we turn it to course zero and we can come in and zero down the meter to get it into there and then what we're going to go do is set our range and we can set find zero pull find zero to pull that in so basically you set the course zero and then at each range change you use find zero again to zero it back in all right so now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go connect this to I have a, a, an 8657B that I was playing around with earlier today and so it should have an RF output in the 50 ohm range Ooh. Um, in a 50 megahertz range of around minus 0.4 and so that's what uh, was coming up on my other meter and here we can see that it's coming up as uh, coming up as uh, minus you know, 0.6 now unfortunately what I did is like this the price came up and this was a great price and I wanted you know didn't want to miss out on this so I grabbed uh, the meter I didn't realize that the uh, thermistor mount uh, didn't come with its calibration data. So typically what uh, you have is the meat, the thermistor will have calibration data which tells you where, uh, what uh, you can set uh, some additional amplification value to be uh, based on the frequency. So often they'll be you know, 99 or 100 at 50 megahertz, and then they'll roll off significantly as they get up towards their uh, top range in the 18 uh, gigahertz range. So I don't really know what uh, uh, what this is supposed to be. So I'm going to have to find some way to actually calibrate this so that I can get that half a percent of power accuracy. But in the meantime, let's set. Let's set the RF on, the amplitude will do the increments in 0.1 dB values. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to step up that value until I get zero on the meter. That's close enough, we'll go a little high. And so now I'm going to do my increment set to be 5 dBm. And so when I do a step down, we should get 5 and then I should step down again and get 10. And, you know, I should be able to go to minus 5, minus 10, so if we step it down again, yeah, it's a little, it's a little out, well, actually, no, it's, this is me, I'm, you're supposed to, uh, when you change range, zero it again. I don't know if you can zero it live, though. I do not believe you can, so, you know. Let's go back to zero. Let's turn the RF on. Okay. So I'm going to go and turn, take this down to minus five. Go to minus ten. Great. So I'm going to hit RF off. We'll take this down to minus ten. We'll hit find zero there. We'll turn the RF back on. Nice, we're getting back up, so now I should be able to take this down to, there we go, we're down to minus you know, 20 dB. So if the RF off, I can come across here and zero the range again, turn this back on, we're minus 5. 
So, yeah, because we're minus 20. So RF off, I can get down to 20. Let's zero it again. And turn my RF on. And so now I can come back down to 25. That's nice. All right, so let's turn the RF off. Let's go all the way back over to here. We'll zero this again. Turn the RF on. Now let's step it up. So we shouldn't see anything until we hit about 0 dB. And there we go. So we're at minus 10, 5, and 0. Now, we don't know how linear, you know, my, I'd have to look at the calibration data that I have for my 8657B to work on the linearity. And then these uh, uh, items can also be calibrated as well. Uh, so we don't know when it was last calibrated and uh, uh, how long ago and all that sort of stuff. But overall, it looks like we have a pretty much a, a working uh, unit. Uh, I'm quite happy with that. You know, um, what I can do is I can. Go, I'm going to have to either uh, buy another four seven eight A mount and then sell this, or I'm going to have to send it off to Keysight and have the mount um, uh, calibrated. Um, because otherwise I'm going to have to try and calibrate it myself and I don't think I have anything that can actually calibrate uh, uh, the, the frequency stuff properly um, or at least to the 0.5% the specification that it is possible to get out of this, uh, this meter. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Catch you later. Bye.